What's up, guys? Welcome to class two, our linear focus. Super excited to dive in here, guys. Really quick, before we start, notice two yoga blocks and a tennis ball today. Our linear focus, guys, is a little more directly, you know, applied to the stuff we do in the gym, the stuff we're doing in our yoga practice, other types of movements. So here is where we're going to really attack hip extension, hip flexion shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, thoracic extension, kind of those common buzzy joint ranges of motion, you know, ankle dorsiflexion, those things that kind of hold us back in the gym, right? Now, when we go through our linear class, very often people tell me they feel stuck, or they're not making progress, or things are feeling like they're plateauing. That usually shows we need more rotation. We talked about this in class one, but it's all about the hip shoulder capsule, the joint capsules, guys. That capsular improvement is how we break through those kind of sticky and pingy type spots, okay? So if you run into those pinches here, usually means more rotation work, all right? So diving in today, guys, we'll start with our breathing. Come into a comfortable seated kneel. So if it is comfy, guys, I'd like you to try and sit back on the toes here just to bring some awareness to our feet. If not, just come into a low seat, cross leg, it's fine. But just starting nice and tall, guys, three big breaths in and out, four seconds in. Eight seconds out, nice and soft. Big inhale through the nose. Big, long exhale. Remember the awareness, guys, of the inhale is about expansion. Feel the ribcage blow up like a balloon. With the exhale, it's about ribcage depression. Feel the ribs pull down. One more time. Move on, guys, to our maximal expansive breath. Same thought process about the rib cage, but now big. How much air can you take in? How much air can you blow out? So guys, we've woken ourselves up with a bit of breathing. Next, we're gonna do a bunch of work on spine segmentation today. So if you've worked on spine segmentation, guys, with cat cows before, working on global flexion and extension of the spine, the only difference in kin stretch is we're trying to segment, meaning we wanna move one vertebrae at a time. So as I do this cat cow, my goal is that you're gonna see a ripple in my shirt on each individual vertebrae, okay? takes practice, but we're going to start at the pelvis and work our way to the base of the neck with three slow reps. As far as tension with the hands, I find it very helpful to kind of press forward into the ground as I flex the spine and then drag back into the ground as I extend the spine. So nice and slow, guys. Weights forward over your hands, some tension through your fingertips, glutes are engaged. Gently tilt your pelvis to the sky, anterior pelvic tilt. Start trying to extend the lumbar spine, sinking the belly. Start peeling the rib cage, the chest, the collarbones, and the sternum towards the sky. So we max out our cow position and extension. Now reverse directions, press the hands forward in the floor, and now tuck the pelvis. Start flexing the lumbar spine slow, guys. Match my tempo concave to that low back, that mid back, the upper back, all the way to the base of the collarbones, getting concave, trying to show every vertebrae towards the sky, and finally chin to chest. Now, reversing direction of the hands, again, dragging towards you, tilt the pelvis, peeling that low lumbar, that low thoracic, Start showing sternum, collarbones, chest, line of the eyes. Reverse direction of the hands, pressing forward, tuck, lumbar flexion, slow guys. Concave in that mid back, reaching the chest and sternum and collarbones to the sky. Max out that global flexion before the eyes drop down. Last rep, reverse direction, hands drag towards you. 
tilt the pelvis, extend the lumbar, peel the sternum, the chest, the collarbones, the eyes. Last time, reverse direction, hands press forward, start rounding, slow guys, slow as rep yet. Concave in the chest, the sternum, the collarbones, and finish with the eyes. Next, guys, come back to that low seated kneel position. If you can't be here without bothering your knees, probably the simplest regression is right there, okay? Otherwise, if you need to, grab a pillow, take the pillow underneath the bottom of the ankles and the yoga block, and that should help, okay? Either way, guys, next, we're gonna do a specific cat cow. So this is now gonna help us isolate just thoracic spine. So it's very common that when we do that global cat cow, guys, that as we go through extension, we find ourselves retracting our scapula. As we go through flexion, we'll find ourselves protracting our scapula. Disassociating the thoracic spine from the scapula is challenging, but that's where that drag of the hands comes in. Again, it takes practice. So. Usually more scapula cars, more practice of spine segmentation, and you'll see that motor control improve. But the drill I like to use to emphasize T-spine segmentation is right here. So again, if you need to regress, please do so. The seated kneel kind of locks my low back in place. So it's a little bit easier to resist moving through the low back here to help us isolate just the upper back. So same cueing, hands press forward as we flex, hands drag back as we extend. Press those hands to the floor and start getting concave in the mid back, rounding the upper back all the way to the base of the neck, and then dip those eyes down. So for me, that's about it as far as thoracic flexion. I reverse the direction of my hands and I start peeling my sternum, my chest, my collarbones, and then very slightly my eyes up. Cool. Reverse directions, concave rounding think like a dinosaur trying to show every spine out of your back trying to poke each vertebrae into your shirt reverse direction hands drag peel think fruit roll up guys unroll the chest the sternum collarbones and eyes last rep press those hands in reverse Make sure we're breathing, don't hold your breath, guys. Typically exhaling during the challenging part for you is what I would suggest. Reverse, extend. Very nice. Next, guys, back to all fours. We'll now do the opposite. We're gonna do a lumbar spine cat cow, specific for the lower back, okay? Here, if you come down to our elbows, two options, either let your head relax, or you can hold your neck strong. I like to grab my fists for some tension. But this time, guys, I want you to flex the thoracic spine and lock it there. So your upper back is rounded towards the sky. This is to prevent the upper back helping. Here we want to isolate just the low back, okay? So I'm in this position for my elbows, flexing my upper back, nice and slow. Tilt the pelvis to the sky and extend the lumbar spine. Gentle reverse, tuck the pelvis, and round that low back. So we're simply trying to move one part of our lumbar at a time, starting with the pelvis, finishing at kind of the base of the rib cage, and then reverse, pelvis tucks, L5, S1, L4, L3, L2, L1, rounding, and then reverse. Keep it gentle, guys. Try to maintain that good flexion in the upper back. Up three, and finish through. Okay, guys, so back to our low kneel. So this one, guys, you can do it seated if this position's kind of starting to irritate your knees. Really quick, cat cows, guys, that is where we start, where we stop. Spine segmentation is king. If you've got something going on at your hips, something going on at your neck, clean up your spine, right? Clean up spine segmentation teach yourself that you can flex and extend with control usually guys the cat cows all three of those variations they tell a story if your spine doesn't move well it probably doesn't feel very good okay 
teach yourself to get a flex and extend your spine. Teach your spine to be able to move freely. Doesn't need to be wiggling at all kinds of crazy angles and all kinds of stuff like we're dancing, but it needs to be to round and extend before we worry about anything else. Don't worry too much about thoracic rotation. Don't worry too much about chasing kind of fun positions until you clean up that cat cow. If you're having issues with the upper back, C-spine cat cow. If you're having issues with the lower back, L-spine cat cow. Okay? Work the reps that you need. All right? Moving on, guys, we've got some drills for our shoulder, and then we're doing a bunch, actually, for our hips and knees. Cool? Seated, take a yoga block right into your belly. Just hug it tight. What I want to work on, guys, is some shoulder end range rotations in three different positions during a shoulder car. So position one is that maximal flexion. So squeezing the ball in your hand, max out flexion of your shoulder. Don't go too far. For me, if I go past my ear, I start rotating my thoracic spine, and I start extending my lumbar into the block. None of that. Rib cage down, chest forward. Max out flexion. Keep that shoulder low and elbow straight. All I want, guys, from here is you're going to trace five really slow, tiny circles in each direction. So I'm drawing a circle about the size of a golf ball. It's got a high degree of tension on the tennis ball, maybe 30 to 50%. Really slow, guys, but carve out some flexion and teach yourself to disassociate overhead flexion of the shoulder from anything else. So get five, reverse direction. I'm going in, back, out, and around. Take your time, guys. If you want a handstand, if you want an overhead press, if you're an athlete, you need to be to go overhead without helping from your back, a crossfitter, any of those practices, guys. So we get our five. Now, internally rotate, show the bicep, turn those knuckles forward. We're going to come into position two, which is this position, maxing out internal rotation of the shoulder and extension if you need to go lower guys that's fine but wherever you can be that's pain-free compensation free i'm not here i'm not here okay same idea five little circles it's going to be a bit funky in this position this guys is motor control when was the last time that you've had your shoulder in this position and tried to control tension so that's four that's five Reverse, squeeze the tennis ball, 30 to 50% tension. In, back, around, and forward. Slow little circles. Last one. Now max out IR and come down to the hip. So we're fully internally rotated. I want you to start extending. Go right about there and freeze. Let's get five more. A little bit easier in this position. Position three, four, Five, reverse direction, guys. And five. Very nice. So we just taught our nervous system it has control here, it has control here, and it has control here. Okay? Let's tie it all in with just one good shoulder card. So slowly flex that shoulder. Try and get a little past where you were before, you before. Internally rotate and reach. Nothing's helping. Max out IR and extension. Continue rotating and finish through. All right. So, guys, something we'll do as we move forward is we'll break down kind of the more complex movements and challenge control of the sticky spots. All right. Those three positions are where we usually see stuff kind of fall apart. So, we get into those positions, we produce tension, and we control our movement. That's simple. Five reps each, guys. Hug that yoga block. Max out overhead flexion. For me, I notice a little more limited on the side. My elbow wants to bend. I have to go a little wider. That's okay. Max out tension, 30 to 50% on the ball. Make sure no compensation. Rib flare common. Thoracic rotation common. Five slow circles. Tracing the size of a golf ball, guys. Barely moving. You'll feel all those little stabilizers around the shoulder kick on. Five, reverse direction. Make sure we're breathing. Don't clench your teeth here. Teach the nervous system it's safe in these positions. Max out internal rotation and extension. Really a limiting spot for me. Make sure we're not here. Make sure we're not here. Lock the elbow, puff that chest. Five tiny circles. Again, motor control in this position is the challenge. Small. 
emphasize the squeeze on the ball, guys. That's five, reverse direction, little ones. And five, coming down to our hip, maxed out internally, rotated, extend a little right there. One, two, it's reverse direction, guys. Great. Next drill is we're going to come down supine, get a little bit of hips and ankles, give a break to our knees. Then we're going to come back, guys, and actually train knee flexion and some hip extension. It's one of my favorites. So come supine for me. Lying on our back. <clears throat> this first drill, guys, I want to do some hip axials, get a little rotation for our hip, but we're going to do it in hip flexion. So. Find 90 degrees of hip flexion. You're going to bring your knee right in line with your hip. If there's any pinching in the front of your hip, guys, or your back has to round into the floor to get you here, back up slightly. If that's very easy, you can bring your knee up closer to your chest. Okay? From there, I want you to meditate on your femur. Think of your thigh. Squeeze some tension through your fists, your glutes. Drive your bottom heel into the floor. Lock your top ankle into your dorsiflexion. I want you to externally rotate and drive your heel towards your opposite hips. You're driving your foot in and up and turning the knee out. My thigh turns out. It's not abduction, so my knee doesn't go out. So it's here. Now, reverse direction, internally rotate. Drive the heel outside of the knee. And then repeat. Five slow reps, guys. Maximal external rotation. Maximal internal rotation nothing else is moving so it should be a very small movement but three slow and controlled teach the hip it has ownership of this position without the low back without the knee without anything else helping that's five extend that knee down we'll switch sides flexing up to 90 degrees good squeeze of that ankle Good tension throughout the body. Externally rotate, heel pulls towards the opposite hip. Internally rotate, heel pulls outside of the knee. Again, you're meditating on the femur. As the heel pulls up, your thigh will turn out. As your heel pulls out, your thigh will turn in. Again, if there's pinching in front, regress out of hip flexion a little bit. Okay, five reps, guys, nice and slow. <sighs> Big exhale during whichever part's harder for you. Slowly coming down. Next, guys, we're gonna work on hip flexion with a passive range hold. Haven't done these yet, really. So what we're gonna do, come into that active hip flexion with your hands, grab behind your thigh, pull yourself into a passive stretch. So pull your thigh as close as your chest you can that you feel you can maintain your spine position. So for me, I get right here, my back starts rounding. I back up a little, that's my end range, okay? Basically, what we're gonna do, guys, is try and solidify tension in our hip, let go of our hands and hold. So actively, I was here, passively, now I'm here. I'm trying to take a passive stretch and turn it into an active strength, cool? This is mobility training at its most basic. So. Passive range holds. Pull yourself into that stretch. Solidify tension. Big breath in and out. Drive the bottom leg into the floor. Squeeze this top glute. I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, you're going to let go of your leg and actively maintain knee to chest. Ready? Three, two, one. Let go and squeeze that hip flexor. Squeeze that glute. Hold. Three, two, one. If it's easy, Deeper into that stretch, make sure a long spine, good tension. Three, two, one, let go and hold. Three seconds, crush that thigh to your chest, guys. Imagine you were squeezing a ball in your hip. One more rep, pull a little bit further. Long spine position, don't let that back help. Let go, squeeze, three, two, one. Guys, I want you to do your best to actively hold your hip in this position. From here, I want you to do five small ankle cars, teaching yourself that in this degree of active hip flexion, you have good motor control of your ankle. Nice and slow. That's five, reverse direction, abduct out, plantar flex down, 
adduct in and dorsiflex go slow. If you need a reminder, give yourself a little tactile cue with your hand, but squeeze the thigh actively into the hand throughout. Slow circle to your guys. Give that hip a little bit of a break. We'll get the other side. So, same idea, guys. Active hip flexion. See how far you can go. That's about it, actively. Grab one, pull a little further, find that passive stretch, make sure you didn't lose spine position. Solidify tension to the straight leg, the top glute. Think about squeezing that hip flexor. Three, two, one, actively hold, pulling thigh to chest, isometric contraction for the hip flexors. Too easy, make it tougher. Pull a little bit closer to the chest, solidify tension. Let go and hold. Three, two, one. One more time, guys. A little bit closer to the chest. Easy. Good tension, long spine. Let go and hold. Three, two, one. Maintain that position. Give yourself a reminder with the hand if you'd like. Five slow ankle cars. Adduct in, plantar flex down, abduct out, and dorsiflex. Teach yourself that when your hip is in maximal flexion, you have motor control of your ankles. Take your time, guys. Think about this. This would be like in the bottom of your squat. Can you use your ankles actively? Switch directions. Adduct in, dorsiflex, abduct out, and extend. Slow and control. You should get a lot of stuff working throughout the hips, quads, and shins. Make sure we're breathing, guys. Last one. Very nice. Straighten on down. All done in this supine position. <clears throat> we just did some good work for our hip flexors. Strengthen them in that short range position, guys. Actively pulling to the chest. What I want to do next. It's work on quote unquote a hip flexor stretch. Now I want to clarify that a little bit. But I see many, many people tell me their hip flexors are, are tight. They always say my hip flexors are so tight. I stretch them all the time. I'm kind of here. I get a big stretch. It feels better after I stretch for 30 seconds. If I arch my back or I turn, it feels better. Okay, guys, for me, you know, we're we're missing the boat a little bit. Again, stretching, flexibility, strength, guys. This is it's all about controlling the nervous system. The secret is the nuanced detail. Okay, if we really want to stretch our hip flexor, all you need to do is have an awareness of your pelvis. So in this half kneeling position, guys, it balances tough, grab a broomstick and hold on or hands on the couch, hands on the wall, whatever you need to do. But half kneeling position, back toes curled under, I prefer. Hands on your pelvis like this, guys, to feel a stretch in your hip flexors, all you do is posteriorly tuck your pelvis. So you're trying to take your pelvis and tuck it under. Right? So I like to think of taking my waistband and drawing it backwards. Cool, you can take your hand right here, press back. Right away, I get a big stretch in front of my head, immediately, okay? If you don't, bring your body weight about two inches forward with that posterior pelvic tuck and you will have a stretch, okay? So guys, what I wanna practice is called kinetic stretching. It's basically just the idea of actively pulling into a stretch and actively pressing out of it. So rather than just finding a flexible position and hanging there, I wanna strengthen pulling into a stretch and pushing out of the stretch. This is gonna carry over to standing up out of the bottom of the squat, okay? So half kneeling position, post your pelvic tuck. I want you to grab your hands, no thumbs, called a gable grip, just your fingers interlocked, wrestling grip. Squeeze those hands strong, pelvis tucked under, I want you to actively pull your pelvis forward and shift your body weight into the stretch. The, reps, the rep ends before you have to let go of pelvic tuck. I have a big stretch in the front of my hip. Now, squeeze your glute and pull yourself back, okay? So, post your tuck, actively pull into the stretch. Three, two, one. Squeeze your bum and push yourself back, okay? You can also think of shoving through this foot to help. Pulling forward into that tuck, find that stretch, shoving back actively, guys. Take your time, should get a lot of stuff going on through the front of the hip. Nice. 
last one, pull into that stretch, press out of the stretch. So strengthening the hip flexor in a short range, like we just did on your back, and then teaching the hip it can be strong as well as flexible, okay? Next drill, this one, guys, if balance was tough, I would definitely suggest holding on to something here. I want you to grab your yoga blocks if you don't have two. Something about that height is probably fine. Prop up your back foot. What we're going to do next, guys, is strengthen another weak point, okay? Active knee flexion, the ability to pull your heel towards your bum, is really important. It shows a lot about the low quad, and it shows a lot about the low hamstring. What we're going to do, guys, is this is basically us strengthening kind of a couch stretch. So if you've done that couch stretch, you know, you're a big fan of Kelly Strett and all that stuff, you like to pull the heel up towards the butt. It is a great stretch for flexibility of the quad, but what is it doing to strengthen our hamstring? So we'll work out of this position probably in the next few weeks. Today, we're going to regress a little. We're just going from there. So tails and rails here, guys. Same position, good tension. You need help for balance, that's fine. Dowels, wall, couch, whatever. What we're gonna do is tuck that pelvis under and start pushing our foot down into this yoga block. So I'm gonna start pressing the block down, trying to straighten my knee, knee extension. You should immediately feel your quad, okay? So start pressing that foot down. As you're pushing down, build that tension up, just like our rotation focus does, tails and rails. It's got a 10% tension, just barely pressing. Build up that intensity, 20 and 30%. Push harder, squeeze your hands, drive your front foot down. Radiate tension throughout the body, guys. Build up tension, 40%. 50, 60, hold, five, four, still push that foot through the floor. Two, one, rails effort. Squeeze your hamstring, pull your heel off the blocks toward your butt, and hold. Cramps are common, squeeze, three, Two, one, fight not to lose pelvis position. Set back down. If that was easy, we can do that for three reps, three lift ups. If that was easy, guys. This time we'll add a hinge of our ankle. So radiate tension, tuck the pelvis, squeeze that hamstring, lift off. If it's easy, hinge the ankle straight, squeeze it back, set down. Again, cramping is common. We're seeing, guys, the hamstring is weak in this position. Motor control. Breathe, teach yourself to use the nervous system, your breath, to control your tension. Squeeze up, easy hold, hinge that ankle straight, Get back, set down. Switching sides, guys. So kinetic stretching for our hip extension. The hip extension, guys, is again, this position, so our thigh behind us. The reason we feel this stretch in our hip flexors is you're feeling a regressive stretch. You're feeling the opposite side of hip joint limit hip extension. So tuck your pelvis, find tension. Actively pull into the stretch. Pull yourself forward. Stop before you lose your pelvis position. Press yourself back. That push back can be front foot and kind of glute pulling. All right? Three second rep forward, three second rep back. Really great exercise before we work on front splits or deadlifts, guys. Great way to get that hip extension. Also great before going for a run or a long walk, for sure. There's four. Take your time. This is as hard as you make it, guys. If you want this intense, higher tension. If you want it to be gentle, low tension. Right? Again, it all comes down to controlling our nervous system, controlling our tension. Got our five. Prop up that foot. If you need to regress, guys, you can go up one block for sure. If a hammy's cramping up right away, shows you knee flexion, it's something we need to work on. Okay? Same idea, hands on the wall, couch, dowels, all good things. Find some tension, tuck that pelvis. We're doing our pails and rails. Gentle pails effort first, start pressing your foot down. Low tension, 5% finds 10%. Build up. 15 and 20. So the radiating tension throughout the body, your front leg, your hands are squeezing. Drive down, guys. 30%. 35 finds 40. Harder. Get that whole quad work and push. 50, 60 and hold. 5, 4, 3, 
to maintain high level of tension in your pelvis tuck. Lift that heel towards your butt actively and hold. Three, two, one. Soft landing. If easy, guys, we add that hinge tuck. Lift off, hinge the ankle. Squeeze back, set down. Very nice. So, guys, the reason we just did that series and the reason we're doing all this hip flexion is probably every linear class we're gonna work on a squat, okay? In a squat, there's a lot of prerequisites, a lot of joint ranges of motion you need in order to squat compensation free. The big one of concern for many of us is ankle dorsiflexion, which we haven't addressed yet, but we're going to in a moment, and hip flexion, okay? You need a lot of ankle dorsiflexion, hip flexion to plop on down there. For many of us though, knee flexion, squeezing those low hamstrings, if your knee can't be in that angle, that bent position, tough to be there, okay? Maybe that bun wick isn't just your hip, just your ankle. Maybe it's actually active mobility of your knees, okay? If that lumbar spine is winking under when you squat, maybe it's also because you can't actively extend it. That lumbar cow cow we already worked on, okay? So a lot of drills today to help our squat. Today, we're gonna be very simple. We're just gonna come into our squat position. Whatever it looks like, I want you to plop on down, find some tension through your hands. I don't care if your feet are wide here. Not really warmed up in the ankles, so that's fine. But find a position you can just hang out. Whether it's here, whether it's here, if you need to hold on to something, that's fine. If you need to sit your weight on blocks, that's fine, okay? I just want you to take five four-second inhales and eight-second exhales, okay? Breathing, guys, like anything else, responds to the position we're in. It's harder to breathe in a squat than it is sitting down. You gotta practice, cool? Big, soft inhale, big, soft exhale. Each breath in, get a little tall in the spine. Each breath out, just sink into your hips. Okay, one more. Take a second, just find some tension in your glutes. Try and see if you can get your knees off your elbows. Try and lift your hips up an inch. Try and puff your chest. Hold. You have five second isometric right here. And just feel solid in your squat. Now, left hand's gonna find the floor. Your left foot is gonna pull under and set down. Okay, now this position, guys, this combat stance, it's too much and you can't be here without it bothering your back ankle. Just come up to a half meal today and we can work from here. Cool. So if we just breathe into our squat, we've already worked in our hip flexion, we've already worked in our back, we haven't attacked ankle dorsiflexion yet. So we're gonna do ankle dorsiflexion tails and rails, a couple things, both sides, get back in our squat, breathe again. Cool. So bring your attention to this foot. What we're gonna do first, guys, is try and find a passive stretch for ankle dorsiflexion. The goal here would be to feel some Achilles, okay? Now, notice, my knee's nice and turned out, my foot's nice and wide. If you're here and you have a pinch in the front of your hip, feel free to step a little wider, okay? If you can't find a stretch in your Achilles, guys, when you shift into dorsiflexion, feel free to turn your foot out, that's fine. I don't care about any of that stuff. But search around for a stretch in your Achilles, if you can't find one, Slide your heel under there, and you can go from there. Okay, again, half new is fine as a regression, guys, but either way, bring your body weight over that thigh, sink into a stretch. The only bad thing here, guys, is a big pinch in front. If you do have that pinch, back up just before 90 degrees, and just forget the idea of being in the stretch, and you'll work from here. Cool, so guys. In this position, we're gonna do pails and rails. Pails is trying to press your forefoot down, as if you were gonna push a gas pedal. So think of your forefoot, okay? But start pressing down through that big toe pad, not your toes, but that forefoot. So shoving down, trying to plantar flex my ankle through the floor. I immediately feel my calf start working. Same idea, guys. 5% finds 10%. 10% finds 15. Push a little harder. As you ramp up intensity, engage tension in your body, squeeze your quads. Squeeze your butt, squeeze your core. Get that whole body helping. Drive down, guys, 40%, 50%. 
60 and hold five four three two your rails effort you're going to try and squeeze your shin and your foot attempt to pull your toes towards your shin as you try and press your knee forward so try and lift your foot up and drive your knee deeper into the stretch for five four three two one relax for a moment so guys and you'll see us do more examples of this but just come down to a low seat scoop under that thigh and tie in with a few ankle cars right after you do pails and rails for a weak point guys it's very important that we teach the nervous system to feel actual motion right isometrics improve range but they don't necessarily teach the brain how to use it so right after do some cars and tie that stuff in okay here as you dorsiflex try and squeeze more intention from your shin and calf use that isometric you just did and tie it in and teach the brain it has control cool so obviously if you squat you can't get down there all the way ankle dorsiflexion the more your knee gets forward the easier it is to get down there less requirement on your hips so if you're that person whose hips are just jacked up in the squat the better your ankles work the less hard your hips have to okay other side guys so same idea in that combat stance option one can be here if that's too much on your hip or your ankle try stepping out a little wider i like this position it's a little more friendly my foot's a little turned out it kind of mirrors the position of my foot when i squat that's fine we can all try and go straight toes, guys, but if you go straight toes and you run into impingement, that's silly. Turn your foot out a little bit. Work your body, not the ideal body that somebody on Instagram talks about. Okay? So drive your weight into dorsiflexion. The goal is to feel that posterior stretch. If you don't feel it, try lifting the heel up a little bit. You could use a, a little five-pound plate or something if you don't have your hand or you can't reach. Again, half kneeling is fine for compensation if you need to be. Big breath in and out. Start pressing that forefoot down, guys. Driving into that forefoot. Think of gas pedaling into the floor. I like to really emphasize the big toe pad. 5% finds 10%. Ramping up in tension slowly to 60. Keep working, guys. As you hit 20%, build up tension. Feel your quads. Feel your glutes. How much of your body can you get involved to push that floor away or radiate? 45 and 50. 55 and 60, hold five, four, three, two, rails effort, try and pull the toes towards the shin, squeezing your shin musculature as you actively dorsiflex, get your knee forward, pull your toes up, five, four, three, two, one, relax in this position. Great guys, same idea, sit off the butt. Scoop under that thigh, give me a few ankle cars and tie that in. Same idea. Squeeze that shin stuff. Teach those ankle dorsiflexors to be involved. Switch directions. Nice and slow. Smooth reps here, not big. All right. Back into our squat, guys. Don't think about it too much. Right back in. This time, find that comfy position. Try and get more weight forward on your feet. When you dorsiflex, your knees drive towards your big toes, your second toes. Make your ankles do the work. Get your weight on your feet. Don't sit back. Same idea. Just five breaths in and out. As you inhale, get tall. As you exhale, sink. Guys, as you finish these five breaths, let me just chat about why. Breathing, guys, is the easiest way to talk to your nervous system. The ability to breathe in a position will make that position more trusted by the brain. If your squat is hard, it's hard to be here, you're working hard to be here, learn how to breathe into it. As you can breathe in your squat, your brain will trust your squat more. As you get your joints to have necessary ranges to do a movement, teach the brain it has control, that's breathing. So as you do your pails and rails for your goal positions, Make sure you also breathe into those positions, okay? All done in our squat today, guys. Next, we're coming down prone, laying on our belly, just for a couple drills. Three drills. <clears throat> one for our shoulders overhead, one for our thoracic spine, 
and one for our hip extensors. Okay, yeah. let's do the T-spine first, just to sort of get some blood flow after we spend all that time in our squat. So here, guys, I want to go knuckles on the floor. The idea is I want you to think of like right here, this position as your fulcrum point. The idea is your pelvis is tucked into the floor, core and glutes is engaged. We're going to peel away from the floor at that fulcrum. So from that kind of sternum. Try and maintain pelvis stock, but as high as you can bridge up, and then lower slow. But I don't want to see you guys this. Keep those ankles plantar flex, those quads engaged, that pelvis stuff. Right to the sternum, control the way down. Get four. Guys, very obviously, it's thoracic extension, very important for a bunch of movements. To improve yours, just make sure the drills you work on are strict. So this is actually my T-spine extending, not my lumbar. So I've got the pelvis tucked. If you want to challenge, let's tie two reps a little bit tougher. Bring the hands behind the head. That's just going to put more weight onto the T-spine. Tuck the pelvis down, same fulcrum point. to the top for a moment and lower slow. Mm. If you want it to be tougher still, this time drag your elbows up first. Right after, guys, our teeth on extension. I want to work on those shoulder end range rotations in position one again. So if you remember back to our shoulder thighs, position one is overhead flexion. Best way to work on this, in my opinion, is prone. Here, really easy to tell if you're trying to extend your lumbar, those ribs jumping on the floor, if your chest starts turning. So if this is too hard, guys, you're simply going to pull wider. Okay? Here, a little bit higher tension, maybe 60 to 80%. Squeeze that ball, squeeze your butt, tuck your pelvis, retract your scapula. I want you to lift off and hold, squeeze, and now trace little circles. You're going to get 10 minutes. Take your time. Slow and controlled. If overhead is tough for you, you can go wider like the letter Y. But breathe, produce that tension through the ball, squeeze that upper body. Teach your brain it owns your shoulder in this position. Two more. Keep the tempo smooth. Yeah. Split directions. Ten go the opposite way. Think like three second reps. Last couple. Very nice, guys. Next drill. Put the ball behind the knee. I want to work on some hip extension. So as we said before, hip extension is the ability to pull your thigh behind you. I don't care if you do plantar flex or dorsiflex. Whichever one, you can squeeze the ball better. For me, I like plantar flex. Big breath in and out. Tuck that pelvis in the floor. Crush the ball behind the knee. Lock the back leg. Squeeze that thigh off the ground. Hold. Make sure the pelvis stays tucked as best as you can. Lower slow, guys. Five reps, three second holds. Now, guys, this should be glute and hamstring. You're only getting hammy. Squeeze your bum. You got to think about it. Squeeze the glute, engage tension, lift up and hold. Three, two, one. If it's cramping in the hammy, guys, you can let go of the ball or you can try dorsiflex. Last one. Very nice, guys. So for round shoulder flexion and hip extension. So find that tension, 60 to 80%, crush the ball, crush your fist, tuck the pelvis, quads, glutes, all that stuff. Lift up, hold, little circles. 10 each way. On this side, guys, I've dislocated this shoulder a bunch of times. Really tough on my nervous system. So you'll notice it looks a little more 
kind of jangy where the circle doesn't look smooth. That shows you my nervous system has less trust on this side. So I use my breathing to teach the brain it is safe in this position. Tiny stretch, guys, and little circles keep them smooth. Last one. Oh, nice ball comes behind me. Right, if you plantar flexed, if you dorsiflexed, five reps, three second hold, tuck that pelvis, lock that back leg. Three, two, one, land soft. Make sure you're actively squeezing the butt. Try to dorsiflex. So, last challenge series of the day, we're going to work some of our first hover challenges <sighs> and some of the stuff you've probably seen more on social media, okay? So, what I want, option one is yoga block under this knee, option two is tennis ball underneath the shin. Either way, guys, unless you can have your knee on the floor and actively press down without anything off the ground, I want something under the knee, okay? Something so you can keep that thigh engaged. So what we're gonna do, guys, three drills. First one is a lift off for our hip flexors. Second one is called a hover challenge. Third one is going to be another hover challenge, but also an ice one to butterfly. So all working this leg, then we'll work the other, and then we'll finish up the day with some low level wrist work. So first one, grab onto that ankle, puff your chest tall, dorsiflex, squeeze your quad, lift your foot up, hold, three, two, one, land soft. If you cramped or you couldn't stay upright, hands can come behind, you can go from there. But guys, we're getting four reps. If it was easy, go forward, okay? You can try two plantar flex if you'd like. If you're lifting guys, getting more than like four inches off the ground, go forward towards the foot, it's a little harder. So a hip flexion lift off, actively working on pulling the leg towards chest, you can feel quad and hip flexor. Cool. If you cramp in your quad, it usually means the hip flexor is weak and you're relying too much on the quads. Quad spazzes out because it's not your hip. You can't do what your hip's supposed to do. It tries instead, it spazzes. So as your hip mobility improves, you'll notice that quad cramp starting to go away, and you'll start feeling this little higher up, high quad cramp. Okay. Next challenge: block next to foot. I would suggest hands behind if you've never done these before. If you have, maybe hands here. Okay. Tension on the ball. Lift up. Hover the target. Set down soft. Now, big thing here, guys, pelvis stays forward. Don't be turning, nothing else is moving, okay? Don't let that foot slam down, make sure we decelerate. Try one plantar flex. Great, guys, next. Slide that guy down about to the height of your shin. What we'll do, this, actually, you know what, for this one, get rid of the block. Same idea as the hover challenge. We're just gonna forget the block so it's not confusing. But lift up, this time externally rotate, bend the knee and hover to butterfly. Once foot finds foot, set down soft. I wanna get three of those, so lift foot up. Squeeze knee to chest, straighten foot up high, and lower slow. <sighs> Externally rotate, squeeze, drive foot to foot, set down soft and butterfly. Short range lift off, tough for me on this side, heel pulls up, knee drives the chest, knee extends, set down soft. This time, guys, we'll stay there. Lift off, externally rotate, 
hinge, set down. Grab that tennis ball and flip sides. Ball is coming underneath that shin or ankle. Yoga blocks and go right there. Don't worry about the rep on this one because we're going to get in a moment. Lift offs first. Here, if you're not sure, Dorsey Flex will do four reps. Need to easy there. I have to go forward. Make sure we land soft. Two reps, plantar flexed. Let's get two slow hover challenges. One dorsiflex, one plantar flex. Can be here. Lift up. Hover that target. Soft landing. Try one plantar flex. Again, the deceleration is key. Soft on the way down. Finishing up here, guys, three reps of our butterfly hover. Lift up, externally rotate, hinge the knee, foot to foot, and set down soft. Nothing else moves, guys. Chest still, lift that foot up, scrape knee to chest, extend knee to the sky, lower slope. Only thing moving here, guys, hips and knees. Lift up, turn the foot and thigh out, hinge in. Squeeze heel to heel, stay tall. Notice how long and slow the exhale is, guys. Use the breath, I promise it helps. Last one. All right, guys, so a lot of stuff we did today, a lot of stuff. What I think you will find here in these first few classes, definitely the first two weeks, rotation is going to be very conceptual at first. Got to figure out. It's usually limited because of motor control. So our class one and class three, slower pace. In linear classes, a lot more similar stuff we're used to doing in the gym and our yoga practice and whatever other stuff you do. So typically linear day, it's going to feel like we're doing more work. To be quite honest, though, the rotation day is probably where the, the gains are. Rotational stuff improves, more capacity of the joints. All of a sudden, we stop plateauing, cramping as much when we do our linear days. So if you cramp a lot today, you'll notice as you improve rotation, cramps will start to decrease. But that's kind of how it goes, guys. Improving the stuff our, our nervous system isn't good at with rotation days, and then challenging the brain to do more similar movements where we're used to in our weak point positions on linear days. Cool? Last thing of the day, guys, just going to finish with some decompressing wrists. Both hands like this, fingertips together, really gentle, elbows just relax, shoulders are low. Just press your fingertips against each other. You can go thumbs on each other as well. You're trying to push like this, okay? You're in wrist flexion, 20 seconds, just a low level isometrics and pales for wrist flexion. Cool, just hit those tops of the wrists. You know, so many people tell me their wrists bother them, guys. You just gotta train them, right? Like, do the work. Put your wrists in a position they don't hurt and strengthen them. Okay, here you're strengthening the top of the wrist, usually that weak point most of us have. Now, maintain some tension, curl your fingers, and try and tap fingertips to palms for your rails effort. We'll do that three times. Good, relax on down, got some blood flow from the top and bottom of the wrist. Now just one side at a time, come into your wrist extension. Very gentle, you're gonna press forward into your opposite hand, for 10 seconds. Just gentle, low level tension for the wrist here. Five, four, three, two, one. Rails effort, try and pull fingertips off. If you can, you can remove the hand for a passive range hold, squeezing wrist extension. Relax, guys. Other side, back to wrist extension. Fight the hand, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, Two, try and rails, pull away and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. So guys, we're all done. Week one is over. Drive me some feedback.